Solar power is another topic on the mind of many. It's one of the cleanest and most abundant energy sources we have, but there's a major challenge. It's the solar cells that convert sunlight into electricity. They aren't as efficient as they could be. Despite decades of research, even the best solar panels out there today only capture a fraction of the sun's energy. What's holding them back? And how is technology helping us push past these limits? In this video, we'll look at the current efficiency rates, try to answer those questions, and see what the solar cell efficiency rate could be in the future. Let's begin with a look at the most efficient solar cells commercially available today, which have around 22 to 23% efficiencies. Some of the top brands like Q-Cells, REC, and Panasonic have efficiencies above 22%. While these efficiencies are far from ideal, they represent significant improvements over earlier solar technologies. The average efficiency of solar panels has increased from 19% to 21.4% in just five years. The current efficiency record for silicon-only commercial cells is 24.5%. Why can't solar cells be more efficient? There are several physical and technical factors that limit solar cell efficiency. The shockley quiser limit is a theoretical cap on the efficiency of single-junction solar cells, which are the most common type. Its limit is about 30% efficiency, and this happens because not all the sunlight hitting the cell can be converted into electricity. Low-energy light passes through without being absorbed, while high-energy light turns into heat instead of electricity. The thermodynamic limits energy conversion that follows the laws of physics and those laws set strict limits on how much sunlight can be turned into usable electricity. Recombination loss is when sunlight hits a solar cell, it creates charged particles called electron hole pairs. The problem is when many of these pairs reconnect or recombine before they can be used as electricity, resulting in energy loss. Light loss is when the sunlight that hits a solar panel is not all absorbed. Some of it bounces off the surface, while some pass through without being used. Despite these challenges, scientists are making significant progress. New technologies are emerging that are pushing solar efficiency to new heights. Multi-junction solar cells are like layered cakes, with each layer made of different materials that capture specific parts of sunlight's spectrum. This design allows them to harness more energy than traditional single-layer cells. Triple junction solar cells based on 3V semiconductor materials have achieved a power conversion efficiency of 39.5% under the AM 1.5G spectrum. These cells are highly efficient but expensive to produce, making them ideal for space applications but not practical for widespread use on Earth. Perovskite is a game-changing material that is cheap, flexible, and easy to manufacture. Perovskite silicon tandem cells combine two layers, perovskite on top and silicon underneath. This design allows them to capture more sunlight and convert it into electricity. These cells have reached an impressive 33.7% efficiency in lab settings, making them some of the most efficient solar cells available. Experts believe perovskite silicon tandems could theoretically reach efficiencies of around 45%. A novel triple junction perovskite silicon tandem cell recently set a world record with a 27.1% efficiency for a small one square centimeter area. Theoretical efficiency for triple junction perovskite silicon tandem solar cells exceeds 50%, indicating significant potential for further improvements. The U.S. National Renewable Energy Lab, or NREL, has achieved 39.5% efficiency under one sun global illumination, the highest efficiency solar cell of any type using quantum wells technology. While reaching 100% efficiency isn't possible due to physics, solar technology is rapidly improving. The future looks promising, but challenges remain, especially around cost and durability. Perovskite solar cells are already cost competitive with traditional silicon-based cells at about 16 cents per watt. Experts predict that cost could drop to 10 cents per watt, making solar power even more affordable. Silicon solar panels typically last 25 to 30 years, but perovskite cells degrade faster, often lasting an average of only 30 months. However, researchers are working on improving their stability. Some prototypes now show potential for 20-year lifespans, though they still degrade over time. 
The main issue is protecting perovskites from water and heat. Well that concludes this video. Remember to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.